Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here, and welcome to the next episode in our Building a Microsoft Teams app. So if this is your first time to this video, uh, and you're wanting to build an app from beginning to end inside of Microsoft Teams, take a look at the description below, where you can see links to all of the other videos that have gotten us to this point. But if you're just say, I'm just here just to see how to integrate, incorporate Power BI into a Teams application, as well as how can I take the data that we've been collecting in a Teams application and build a report in Power BI, then there's no need to watch the other video. You can just watch to see how this is done. Also, if this is your first time to the channel, uh, make sure to, to subscribe to stay up to date on all the things that we do here on our YouTube channel. So without any further ado, let's see how we can integrate Power BI inside of our Teams application. All right, so the first thing is I'm logged into Teams here. I've clicked on my Power App section um, in my correct team, which is my YouTube app and team series. And what I want to do is just come on over and take a look at the application that we have. So this is my student check-in application. Uh, and what I've done before doing this video is I've already set up some of the Power BI integration. And I'll show you how easy this is done here. So I'm going to come on over to this screen called Interactive Report. So this is a report page that I built in Power BI. And what this does is it allows me to integrate my data that I collected inside of Dataverse. I built out Power BI report pages, published it out to the service, and then I pinned one of my live report pages to a dashboard. I then took that dashboard and put it, embedded it here into the application screen. So if I want to say, well, I want to see all the students that have been checked in by Jonathan Silva. I can come right here, go to Jonathan, and we can see that Layla was the only one and she was checked in one time. Uh, if I want to see all of them here again, I can remove this entire filter here. If I go, well, how many people have been checked in on Mondays? No people have been checked in on Mondays. If I want to go to Sundays, you know, maybe we had weekend school or whatever the case might be, because I just put in random dates here. So this report page is, is acting just like a regular Power BI report. Now you can also do the following here, is maybe you just want to put in one of your visualizations from the report. So I put in the, that nice little pie chart here. And watch what happens when I click on this individual tile from my Power BI dashboard, it's going to take my user out to the Power BI report where this came from. So there's a few things in order to set this up if you're wanting to integrate your Power BI into your Teams application. So the first thing is just how I put these in, and I'll come out of here and I'll just show. So I'm just going to make a real quick little uh, test screen here. And then on this test screen, if you go to your insert ribbon at the top and you search for Power BI, you would click on Power BI tile. Then from here, you choose the workspace where your Power BI report lives. So it can't just be a Power BI file. Your Power BI report has to be published out to the Power BI service. So I go to my workspace. I pick my, my uh, actual dashboard. So I made one called Check-In Report, which is a live page on the dashboard. And I click my Student Check-In Report. And then right here, that is the whole report. Now, if I just want to use one of my tiles and not an actual live report, I made a separate dashboard called check-in tiles, and then I can bring in that extra visualization. So that's how you integrate it in. Uh, the one thing to note is right here. If you put your Power BI dashboard tiles or the Power BI live report pages from your dashboard itself, what you have to remember is that you need to share that report with the users who are going to use the application. So if I share this report with Jonathan, for example, but I did not share my Power BI report on the service with Jonathan, he is not going to be able to integrate or be able to interact with these visualizations. He won't see any data whatsoever. So if you want them to see the Power BI data, you have to share, obviously, the app with them, which we'll be covering in another video, and you have to share the report with them, or they have to be part of your workspace. So now, how did I get this report created? Now, we're not going to go through the full Power BI report creation, but I am going to give you the starting points of what you would need to do. So let's take a look at that next. All right, so this is the Power BI report I made in the Power BI desktop. And you can see my, my different visuals that you saw earlier uh, from the application itself. Now, once I built this Power BI report, what I had to do is click my Publish button up here and then publish this out to a workspace. 
and I just chose to publish it into my workspace, uh, but it could be any workspace that you want to. And then once it's out on the workspace, that's where you create the dashboards themselves. So after this was published out here, let me go on over into my workspace. And from right here, so I'm in my workspace, and you can see here I called it the check-in report. So here's my student check-in report. And then I just chose what I wanted to use. So from here, if I want to just pin one of my individual visuals, I click on this pin icon right at the top. And then when I click on pin visual, I choose what dashboard do I want to move this visualization to. Once that is on a dashboard, then I can hook it into the Canvas application inside of Teams. Now, if I want to pin the entire report page as well, I can pin the entire report page. And when you pin an entire report page, that was the first page I showed in the application, that's where they can actually use the Power BI report. So when they click on the visuals, they start to filter down. If it's just a tile, when the user clicks on that tile, it takes them to the full report itself. So you have a few different options here. Well, how did I get that data from the Teams application inside of Power BI? We now know how to get the report out to the service, and we now know how to make the dashboard, but how do we get the data itself? Well, that's the next thing that we're going to discuss here. All right, so how I would get that data out is I'm going to come back to my home section here, um, and then I'm going to go back to build, and I'm going to go down here to see all. Now, in see all, this is everything that I have inside of this team for other products I've worked on as well. But if I come over here and click on tables, up at the top, there's an export Analyze and Power BI. So once I click Analyze and Power BI, it's going to download a file for me. So now that that file has been downloaded, the next thing is that we need to open it. But we don't go to Power BI to open the file because it's technically not a report. So you can see down here I have the download. So I'm just going to click on it to get started here. Now this is going to open up the Power BI desktop. A report is not going to be made, but this is going to have my data connection for all of those tables that we have inside. And so once this finally loads, it says, all right, well, here is your Dataverse, as we can see. This is everything inside of that team. And now I want to pull back my actual tables. Now I had quite a few tables, but I know one of them was called the student table. And what we see is that there's this prefix right in front. This is what we call a publisher prefix for the solution inside of that team. So if you want to find just your tables that you have created, you could put that publisher prefix in. And as I put that in, you can see I have other tables inside of this team. Now I just choose which tables I want to use for this report. So I want my student table, my check-in, and my room table. Now once I have those, technically I could just load the data and it brings every single column in, but part of Power BI is knowing some best practices, so I would come over here and do a transform data. So I can choose what columns from these tables I want to utilize, as well as just clean up the table names. So up here, and again, if you don't have any Power BI experience, definitely head over to our on-demand learning platform. We have a free course called Dashboard in a Day, where you can learn how to do a lot of uh, great things inside of Power BI, and it's a great starting point for you. But one of the things I would do here is like change the names of my tables. So I would just come on over and I would call this like the student table. And then I would do the same thing for student check-in out room table. Now the other thing I would do is we see that down here there were 46 columns from the student table. But if you followed along with me, you know that I did not make 46 columns on this table. So I really just want the columns that I created. So the easiest way to do that is to come up to the Choose Columns. I click on Choose Columns. And then from here, I'm going to once again search for my prefix. So I don't want to bring in all these other standard columns that come with the table. I would just simply say, I want my individual columns that I created. And I would select all of those, and then I would hit OK. And then I would do that exact same process for every other table. So I'm going to do that very quickly here. So I'm going to go to Choose Columns, Unselect, Select All, just bring in my columns, and then finally I would do it for the room table as well. So I'd go to Choose Columns, I would unselect all of them, just put in the ones that I created, and then hit OK. 
Now you'll notice when you do that, we still get some extra columns that are technically not needed. Uh, so for example, because this room table has relationship to my student check in and out, I could bring in the related columns for that table and bring them onto the room table. But now I'm really duplicating data, so that's really not necessary. So I would get rid of that table reference column here. And then I would do the same thing on my student check in and out as well. So if I scroll all the way to the end, these were for my, my different lookups. So I'm going to collect those. I'm going to say remove those columns. And then finally, I'd come over here to the student table and I would go to the very end as well and get rid of this last one here. So now what's great about this is because data versus a relational database, it has already created the relationships for me. So now all I have to do is come on over and click close and apply. And when I hit close and apply, what's going to happen is it's going to load this data, but it doesn't technically import the data because we have a live connection to Dataverse. So as the data changes there, all of our visuals would start to change. So we don't even have to set this up on a scheduled refresh. But if I come over here to the model view, this is going to show you the different relationships that we have. So we see here that for our student check in and out, we have a one to many relationship because one student can be checked in multiple times on the check in table. And then on the room table, it's also a one to many relationship because each room is unique on the room table, but we can have uh, check ins for that room, you know, 50, 60, 70 different times. So the relationship is completely made here for you. Then all you have to do is you just come on over to the report view and you start building out the visuals that you want to see. Uh, and so I built those visuals. I'm not going to sit you through and walk you through how I built those visuals out uh, because you're going to want to have some Power BI experience in order to do that. Now, one of the other things that I did do in that last, uh, if you looked at that original report I opened, you saw that I had a date table in there as well. Uh, I added that in because if I want to analyze my data of the check-in and outs, the way we were logging it is an individual date and time. So it put the date and it put the time. Well, if I just want to see things by dates or months or the years, that's where I need a different dimensional table, which is called a date table. And then I can make a relationship between the two and it allows me to start to filter down on those different options. And how I made that date table, I didn't really make it. I used Devin Knight, who's uh, um, another trainer here, uh, uh, president of uh, Pragmatic Works. And I'll put in the link description below how you can just simply copy out a line of um, some Power Query code, paste it in, and it will then create the date table for you. And the link to his blog will walk you through all those steps of how it's done. So hopefully you've seen now that in our video, I think right before this one, I showed how to integrate Power Automate inside of a Teams application. Well, now we're using another part of the Power Platform, how you can integrate Power BI inside of your Teams application as well. So hopefully you enjoyed. Stay tuned. We have a few more episodes in the series, and then our application is going to be done. So hopefully I'll be seeing you in the next one.